A very good morning, all of you. So today's live session will focus on film thickness and cement thickness. I have some key points for you, but I'm not going to give them straight away. Rather, we'll uh, have some discussion in the form of blanks, in the form of other formats which I have framed just before this session, right? So we'll deal with film thickness and cement thickness, but I want you to make notes accordingly. And all the homework that I'm going to give you today is just to make notes from the given discussion, and then you can get back through mail for any further assistance, okay? So uh, once again, a very good morning, each and every one of you. So as you can see, we'll start with the first question. But before I proceed, I want to initiate the discussion with the following question. Are film thickness and cement thickness the same, or are they different? So just keep that question in mind. We'll discuss that again at the end of this session. Okay, so first question, as you can see, maximum allowable film thickness for luting applications is, so can you give me the number? What is the maximum allowable film thickness for luting applications? Yes, Arithuj, of course, these values are challenging to remember, and that's the reason why we're having this live session, and that's the reason why I've asked you to maintain notes as well. Maintain notes, repeatedly revise, and then forget it. You will have everything in your subconscious memory. Good. So, the maximum allowable film thickness for luting applications is 25 microns, as you rightly mentioned. Remember, we're talking about film thickness, not cement thickness. Okay? Good. So do consider this 25 microns, right? Now, let's move on to the next question. For root canal sealers, the maximum film thickness is, we're talking about film thickness in terms of luting of your crowns, inlays, veneers, etc. But when it comes to root canal sealers, what is the maximum film thickness? Okay, just double it, okay? Uh, root canal, it's a costly procedure, so just uh, double it. 50 microns. Remember, we're talking about root canal sealers, okay? So maximum film thickness, maximum. So there can be variation, so the maximum is 50 microns. Good. Now, moving on to the next question, film thickness refers to thickness of continuous cement after seating under pressure according to ADS specification number. So they might not actually ask you the number, but since we're dealing with some numbers, I wanted to incorporate this as well in your live session, but don't worry even if you don't remember, but at least you should be able to make out if uh, the options are given. Even if you're not able to answer in the form of blanks, you should be able to make out the difference if options are given. Good. It seems you're all familiar with this. Okay. It seems very simple. But what is the ISO number? The previous ISO number now currently equivalent to ADS specification number 96, which you rightly mentioned. What is the ISO number? It's only uh, for fun, okay? Uh, you need not really mug up these things. Okay, double nine one seven. Good. Uh, it seems Malvika and Ritika have answered. Good. Keep it up. Now. In this particular point, you can see what film thickness is all about. So as you can see, film thickness refers to thickness of continuous cement after seating under pressure according to ADS specification number 96. How much pressure? What thickness are we talking about? We'll again get back to that at the end of the session while discussing film thickness and cement thickness. Good. Now, moving on to the next question. Acceptable cement thickness ranges from, now we shifted to cement thickness, carefully try to follow. Acceptable cement thickness ranges from. So uh, since I said ranges from, so obviously we have a range. So what is that range? 
good i know these are all numbers difficult to remember when someone asks us at random but see to that you're making notes okay the simple strategy which you can implement is just make notes repeatedly revise for the next 5 to 7 days early in the morning and then leave it you'll have that imprinted in your memory take my word good it's 25 to 120 microns Twenty-five to one twenty. Okay. Now uh, we're talking about cement thickness, right? Now moving on to the next question. Cement thickness of resin cements is. Uh, we're saying here that the range is between twenty-five to one twenty. So, what do you think is the cement thickness of resin cements? I mean, I've observed two categories of people, like those who actually love numbers. I'm one of them, and those who hate numbers. I've seen my friends hating numbers, especially when we were in high school and all, uh, going through the historical facts, the years and all. I used to love, uh, I used to enjoy remembering those numerical facts. But I've seen my friends simply hating them. So, which category do you belong to? Good, Ankur. So cement thickness of resin cements is usually more than 150 microns. Consider that as an exception. Okay. So as we said, the range is what 25 to 120, but in case of resin cements, it's usually more than 150 micron. Okay. So um, do make a note of that point. Now moving on to the next question. Uh, a fun fact. Uh, for us to understand all these numericals right so when we compare with that of human hair uh, you can just uh, uh, imagine how what a uh, thickness we are actually dealing with so what do you think is the diameter of human hair so it's given in philips so what do you think is the diameter range of human hair we're talking about 25 microns 20 microns 100 microns 150 microns so what do you think is the diameter of human hair just for sake of comparison good <laughs> uh, it's a very strange number and range to remember uh, it's given as 17 to 50 microns i mean uh, uh, there are several scientific ideals which might quote different values but since we are following philips so it is 17 to 50 microns not that it's going to come in exam but it's only for fun uh, when you incorporate general facts uh, the subject becomes much more interesting okay good 17 17 to 50 17 to 50 microns now this question might seem challenging you need not remember the values at all but i want you to give me a order so arrange the following in ascending order based on their film thickness based on the film thickness starting from least or minimum to maximum so you have the following options compomer gic zinc phosphate so arrange them in ascending order okay so we actually have a table in philips where they have quantified film thickness uh, based on uh, the methodology which is mentioned here in brief So I'll give you the values and then you can uh, note down accordingly. Compomer has a film thickness of 36 microns. GIC 24 microns. Zinc phosphate 20 microns. So it can be considered as the best luting agent in uh, especially when it uh, comes to the film thickness terms. So among the given options zinc phosphate has the least but the minimum film thickness which is obviously desirable right so zinc phosphate gic and compomer okay so in the given table we have values quantified as i mentioned you need not remember or mug up the values as such but see if you can uh, deduce comparisons like least to highest or the one which is exhibiting a minimum film thickness something like that okay so uh, make tables 
uh, into fun facts so that it will be interesting at the same time useful for you in entrance perspective okay so this is just one such example now filling thickness of resin modified gis so i'm asking you the actual value now what do you think is the film thickness of resin modified gic good so uh, we have a range so no matter which value you give i think it falls into that range okay film thickness of resin modified gi say do you, do you want to try or do you want me to post answer you might feel strongly inside that let this guy give all the answers we'll mug it up yeah th uh, that will eventually happen but before i give up the answers if you try from your side whether you're right or wrong uh, that active participation from yours will help you remember for even longer time if you're wrong you will rectify if you're right it will get even uh, you know imprinted further okay uh, anyways it is between 11 to 22 talking about film thickness okay good film thickness indicates so applicative aspect so what does this film thickness indicate we're saying film thickness refers to thickness of continuous cement under applied load etc and etc but what does film thickness actually indicate when it comes to the properties of dental materials strength of cement bonding potential viscosity all of the above good those have answered i appreciate you for giving out your answers so what does film thickness indicate I'll briefly give you some explanation and try answering based on that. See, as we discussed here, film thickness refers to thickness of continuous cement after sitting under pressure. So we actually take two flat surfaces and then we place a cement and then we apply a load of 150 newtons. It happens in lab. And after 10 minutes, uh, the setting is done, and then we try to measure the film thickness between the slabs. So that's how we deduce film thickness. So the film which is formed has to be continuous without any voids which indicates the viscosity of the cement so it's obvious when we say the film thickness is very low as in case of zinc phosphate the viscosity is also very low isn't it that's the reason why it's able to flow very well between the processes and your tooth structure so the film thickness indicates the viscosity of the cement there's nothing to do with strength even though powder liquid ratios other factors do affect the film thickness but what does actual film thickness indicate it, it indicates the viscosity of the cement so consider this very very important bonding potential uh, no you see uh, actually we say when you place a processes of course cement thickness plays a role in bonding but it's rather the paper which we are giving to the preparation as such which is uh, very much important than the cement which you are using for luting good so film thickness indicates viscosity of the cement right i hope it's clear so the only homework as i mentioned i'll be giving you is do make a note of the entire points which you discussed it hardly takes 5 to 10 minutes right and then you can get back through mail and you need any further information or clarification you're most welcome so before i conclude let me summarize all that we have discussed so far so we've seen various values pertaining to film thickness and i said i'll be discussing the difference right so is there any difference between film thickness and cement thickness i haven't answered it yet the only thing i said is about film thickness so do you think is there any difference between film thickness and cement thickness if yes what's the difference so it's very simple film thickness is which we're dealing in lab like we're placing between two slabs trying to evaluate the thickness of the continuous cement right so that's film thickness but what about cement thickness cement thickness as the name itself indicates it's a thickness of cement between the processes and the tooth structure the process can include full crown partial crown inlays on layers veneers etc right so there is a difference and both are not the same 
uh, subtle difference you should try to understand okay i hope it's clear so uh, to summarize maximum allowable film thickness for luting applications is 25 microns root canal sealers the maximum film thickness is the double 50 microns Film thickness refers to thickness of continuous cement after seating under pressure according to ADS specification number 96. Even for water-based cements, it's 96 or ISO 9917. Acceptable cement thickness ranges from, we're talking about cement thickness here, 25 to 120 microns. And the cement thickness of resin cements is more than 150 microns usually. Diameter of human hair for comparison is in the range of 17 to 50 microns. And in the following in ascending or descending order, you should be able to answer. Uh, even though if you don't exactly remove the values, at least try to deduce these relations. So, Compomer has a film thickness of 36 microns, GIC 24, zinc phosphate 20 microns. Film thickness of RMGIC is in the range of 11 to 22 microns. And the film thickness indicates the viscosity of the cement. Isn't it? So, lower the film thickness, lower the viscosity. I hope it's clear. I hope this session is informative. And we'll see you again tomorrow at 10 30 a.m. Indian Standard Time in another live session, breakfast session. Right? So, wish you all the best. Love you all and have a wonderful day ahead.